Hi, I'm Delaney Rustin. I'm a physician and documentary filmmaker, and I'm really excited to be here as part of the Glenbard Parent Series and to talk to you students a little bit about stress resilience. Particularly, I want to give three points that are highlighted in the new documentary, Screenagers Next Chapter, but there are many points. The film really is for teens and their parents, as well as educators. So to you teens, I just want to say a few things related to emotional well-being. And the first is something that amazes me as a physician. The reality that hard emotions such as anxiety, depression, somehow always seem to whisper in somebody's ear, don't tell anyone else. You're alone and this is your problem and don't share it. That is the worst unfortunate reality of these hard emotions. Don't listen to those words. And fascinating research that's shown in next chapter actually looks at when people suppress emotions. Not only do they not get the help that they need, but also let's say it's mild emotions and they're not sharing it with others, but they're upset about it. It actually causes their cognitive abilities to decrease. And so day after day, if you're not talking with friends to try to resolve conflicts, you're actually going to not do as well in school and with other goals that you want. The next point I want to talk about is anxiety. And something to keep in mind is that when you should be really concerned about your anxiety, of course, it's anxious time being an adolescent. But if your anxiety is causing you to avoid things, that's one of the first things that I ask patients when I'm screening about anxiety. Are you not going out with friends? Are you um, consistently not wanting to go to school or not stepping into a challenging new situation like a club or something like that? That's the time to know that actually in MRI studies, we can see that the brain can become hyperactive in the fear center of the brain, even though it's misreading the situation. And the way that we do this both in a medical field, but also that you can do, is to really take that challenge and step into the thing that you're avoiding. The point is though, that you could very well need some scaffolding, some help. So get a counselor, get somebody, talk to your parents about baby steps you can do to face that fear. And finally, the third point I want to make relates to depression feelings. It's really fascinating and in the next chapter you actually see the story of my daughter and I as we deal with her depression and her stress resilience. So many things that we both learned how to improve her emotional well-being. One of them is called behavioral activation. And it has to do with the fact that with depression, thoughts of unworthiness and low motivation, comes also this complete desire to not do things. And we can see on the MRI, again, of the brain that the reward center actually has less response to a certain situation than those who are not undergoing depression thoughts. It's actually physiologically in the brain. One of the main treatments for this is to do the thing that your brain is saying, I have no motivation for. Again, it might be that you're not wanting to do it at all and that's where getting support really helps. Knowing these things actually before you ever, hopefully ever have bad depression or anxiety will help you in case in the future they tell you don't tell anyone else, avoid things, or don't do the things that used to make you pleasure, give you pleasure. Finding that support team is crucial and in next chapter, lots of other solutions. You know, we often hear stories about teens, stress, anxiety, and depression, but how often do we hear stories about solutions? And that's really why I made this film and we're working hard to get these solutions to you guys and many others. Um, you know, all of these skills and many more are at ScreenagersMovie.com. So this is Screenagers' next chapter of the movie, but it's all on one website, ScreenagersMovie.com. <laughs>